Right guys, welcome back to the Regal Gentleman YouTube channel uh, here at the Unhaunted Collective. We have got um, quite an interesting haircut today with it being uh, the release of the new Spider-Man. We actually got the look like a Tom Holland in today, which I'm pretty amazed by really. I mean, I haven't, I haven't met the real one yet, but you know, you're not a bad one to do. Um, but no, in all seriousness, we, um, we were actually using it as a bit of inspiration really for this haircut, but we were talking a bit earlier and um, Christian's hair is quite fine texture. Um, it's, as you can see, it, it, I mean, it, it stands up without anything in it. It's got a lot of movement in it, but it's got a very fine, like, it's all over, not just on the top, like genuinely all over. But you know what? It's not a bad thing. Again, we spoke about haircuts that would make you look um, slightly thinner, younger, different things like that. And one of the things you said to me before, wasn't it, was that you know every haircut I've had it makes me look really young like a schoolboy. And we don't want to do that, right? So what I thought we could do today was again keep a bit of length in it. Anything fine like this, very fine section, we want to stay away from scalp exposure. Purely for that if, with the sides being a bit finer as well. The more see through this hair gets and the more shorter you go on this haircut. It will make it look a lot thinner than it needs to be. So what I was thinking to do today is kind of keeping it to finger length on the sides and the back. Now normally I would do scissor over comb, but I thought today we do a technique which is called palm to palm. So you might see this in a lot of hairdressing videos, um, but it's basically where you work palm to palm. So you put your fingers like this, you pick up the length that you want, so I'll give you an idea. Pick it up with your palm facing you, and your other palm facing away from you, which is again palm to palm, so you cut. This is like that, that's why it's called palm to palm. So what I was thinking to do is, again today is using that technique around the back and sides. It allows me to keep a lot more length in it and also the way I do it will create movement and texture straight away. This is basically what we call like a nice tidy up and trim for you. Basically. Just taking whatever length is coming off over the years to tidy it up, but again keeping that longer length in it. Maybe not even tapering it too tight on the neck, but just keep up again overall more length in the circles. And then look at the top. This is probably something that I'm, I'm actually going to cut blunt or uniform or club cuts, whichever way you want, you want to explain it. If I start point cutting to finer hair, it will make it kind of feel fine on the end. The ends will look a lot kind of split and probably not as full as you'd like it to do. And when you've got finer hair, same, kind of the same understanding as curly hair, it creates its own movement and texture. So you don't have to overly texturize the circle to get a start of it, as you can see. Moving it around now, even with it being long, it's going whichever way I want it to, it's starting whichever way I'd like it to. That's because the hair's fine, it'll move about more, it won't get caught up in itself. So again, the technique used on the top, which is very blunt, which I try and stay away from a lot of the time, is actually beneficial for this style that we're going to go for in Christian today. So we give it a wash, condition, and then we'll start and explain the palm to palm cutting point. Ready? Let's do it. Right, so we've shampooed it and conditioned it. So I'm going to find my horseshoe section now. If you look at the round head, it's quite flat here. As you can see, if I, if I flatten that down a bit, it's quite flat. Now, if we're looking at previous videos, you'll see what I mean by some people don't have such a sort of roundness at the back here. Some of it's, well, it's quite square, it's quite wide. Um, this is quite flat, so I want to try and build weight in this here. I want to build some thickness in this as well. So um, by dropping the horseshoe down, allows me to leave more length here and connect it in more of a, uh, a square angle. That's what we're looking to do today. Again, this is the thing that I take the most time with. The reason for this being is that this is this is asymmetric. Your hair goes to be asymmetric. That's 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 the the, the the principle of this horseshoe. Get it completely perfect as, or as perfect as you can, and your haircut will stay balanced on the sides and the back, and then the connection will stay balanced and the top will stay balanced. Now you want the hair to be quite wet on this one. Now I know we say cutting hair is cut, cutting hair wet is cutting hair blind, but not necessarily when you're working through your palm to palm. It's quite hard to get between your fingers if it's too dry. And um, it is a very visual way of doing this. Now we're cutting in what we call the primary shape now. So I'm not point cutting into this haircut or texturizing this haircut at the moment. I'm just cutting in the primary shape. So by bringing your fingers straight on like this, the natural curvature of the head, where we put our horseshoe at the round of the head, will create that squareness because I'm working through like this. So by bringing this in and keeping my fingers completely against this head, as you can see, the higher up you get the top, my fingers are coming out slightly and I'm going to be more length through the corner here. But what I've also done there is I've over-directed these sections into this middle point. So this is quite short and either side's long and you can't really tell until you wear product in it. And you'll start to see as we, can, as we sort of progress throughout the haircut, you'll see where I've pulled everything in. So it's over-directing all the way through. And that's what we're trying to create. Again, we're trying to create the squareness and this leanness in this haircut. Nothing's going to be round, nothing's going to be cut completely straight all the way around. It's going to be long, short, long, short, long, short, long, short, like a diamond. It won't look it. But that's the end, that's what, again, if you look at a diamond, it looks round, but actually it's not. There's a lot of different facets throughout that. And this is the same kind of principle of what I'm doing on the back and sides of this haircut now. 
So this is naturally starting to taper towards the bottom. As the closer I get down the bottom, the round head comes away. We're keeping a little bit of length in this. We're not going to start seeing scalp exposing in this because I'm keeping it finger length. There's my guide underneath there, nice and straight. And cut. So don't be worried about leaving a bit more length towards the knee. We can't cut that anyway, but still have a go anyway. You're going to leave naturally some length down the bottom. That's fine because we'll use it as our section here and we'll blend down in a minute. I will show you what the section is like if I pick it up. You can see we've got longer bits. Longer, shorter, as we go up here. See that? So you've got all that really broken up sort of um, cutting method on the side. But yeah, it looks from perfectly kind of blended in and perfectly straight. So that will come out when you wear a bit of product and you'll see that texture and that movement sitting through the hair. So this is great for someone who wants that really, like, almost like what mine is on the sides, it was a bit longer. You want that really messiness on the sides. This works really well because you have the longer, shorter, longer, shorter that you can't really tell. It's all completely seamless. So this works really well for longer hairstyles as well. Ben, so we're doing a kind of Tom Holland inspired yes. cut. What would you say the differences are between Christian hair and Tom hair? Um, the difference straight away is obviously the thickness. Tom's looks super thick. I've never I've never worked with them, but his hair looks super thick. But it's we're looking at the kind of face shape and the, the look of this as well. So um as as again, like his hair might not be as thick as Tom's, but like we were saying before, you know, we don't have to if we go super short, it'll start looking nice and like, a bit too thin. If we keep it a bit longer, it'll start looking a bit longer, a bit thicker. Um, but I think there's the whole sort of... I, the thing that was struck me with, with... It was more Christian's look and his face, that kind of... You said straight away, wasn't it, Tom Holland? We yeah. thought, you know what? Same kind of hair, same kind of look about him. It kind of works, and that was kind of one of the reasons why we went off that as, a, as an idea. But again, this is just loosely based on, on Tom Holland, really. But again, the, the look that... Christian would suit is his look. It just seems to be a bit of a coincidence that is his look. So again, if you look at Tom's, I'm looking more from like the Spider-Man um, premieres that he's been to, obviously advertised in the film. Is that kind of a bit more length in the sides, kind of slicked over to one side a bit. But again, we're going to be looking more for um, Christian to have more of a drier product, so more towards your clay than anything else. Um, because it's it's going to be obviously you know if you put a, a wetter product through uh, Christian to to separate it and make it look a lot thinner. But we just thought that it's got this very similar look. So I thought I'd try and stay true to that really. And by doing this through my fingers, it's a nice length to kind of start off by by saying like it's going to it's going to be no longer than the finger length, which is a couple you know a few centimeters or so. So it's a nice way to kind of get a good guide of how long you're going to take it purely for the client. And obviously again looking at like pictures and things that's quite nice to show uh, Christian what we had in our mind as well. So. And then coincidental really, but again it works for him. I think it'll suit him a lot as well. I'm going to bring this one back as we've got nothing else to work from. Go into my guide. Right, so there is my palm to palm finished. I'm going to dry it through and I'm going to start by taking the edges, a bit of scissor over comb, a bit of clipper over comb and just shaping around the ears as well. So I'm just drying this through and start to see how it sits. As you see, we're not starting to see scalp exposure, we're keeping a bit of length in there. But what you'll start to see now, when I start to taper these edges in, the length that we've left here through our fingers is creating that squareness in there. Now you'll see it better once we start to taper the edges in, but I'm going to leave this length at the top and just graduate down the bottom. And we've created a nice squareness, but don't forget, whatever angle our fingers are at, we will create that shape as well. Here we start on the right hand side. So again, like I always say, Start on the right hand side of your right hander, start on the left hand side of your left hander, and we start here. A good, a good indication when someone says they don't want it too short, I would say whatever length is coming over the ears should we take off. So again, as you can see, there's maybe a half an inch coming off over the ears, so that'll be sitting nice. We you work that around there, you're not going to see any scalp exposure, but it'll make it look nice and tidy, nice and sh uh, shaped, and just nice and clean as well. I'm going to start here, take it up now. Here's where you can see the section that I did before. Longer, shorter, longer. That's what we were aiming at before. But you can't tell that when you look through there. Because the way everything's over-directed in, it's consistent, and the sections are small, you can't see that. But what you'll see, when you wear product in that, you'll see things, like if you look at that, it's just moving around a little bit. It's got a little bit of movement. And again, his hair's fine. So you don't want to overly texturize this. By just putting primary shaping and creating these palm-to-palm -palm sections will create natural texture, but not overly kind of thin it out or raise it or anything like that. So this is why this, this technique is really good for anyone with thinner hair as well. So what I'm gonna do. I'm going to bring this in a little bit and I'm going to cut in the hairline. And I'm going to work. I'm going to use the shortest elements of the haircut 
as my guide and just get a little bit short as we get around the ears. Working from this angle, dropping it down slightly now. As you see, long, short, long, that's what we're looking for. Just cutting this in, it's a nice natural taper towards the edges. And I'm not trying to create too much scalp exposure, so I'm keeping it still quite long. Just getting slightly graduating towards the bottom. So that's what I was saying before, but not worrying too much about trying to get your fingers down to the nape. You're gonna taper this in with the scissor over comb anyway. But you've got your nice guy from about there. I'm just strengthening through the temple here. I'm not trying to put in too much on this, as you can see it's a bit weaker there. So I want to try and keep that fullness in there, so I'm not trying to cut it into too much. Just trying to create a nice little hairline through there. So I'm just tapering just in the edges here. Just taking away any of that unwanted or necessary longer length through the bottom here. I'm just going to work around the ear, so I'm not looking to take it too high across the ear. I just want to strengthen this up again. We're trying to play into the, the eyes of that longer length. So again, if you loop it too much around the ear, it looks too tidy, it looks too shaped. We're just trying to make this look tidy and neater. Take the side bend in just a touch. Again, what you've got to think about is what you can see from afar as well, that's what you can see up close. Further away you go, it looks nice and strength, it looks like a bit more lean, but stronger through the ears as well. If I went too short there, as you can see, it's quite fine. So you're almost kind of, again, over directing that hair as well to keep the strength in the side bends as well. Now I'm just going to taper this in tight, a little bit tighter, just to define the scissor work. Just because he's got a little bit of curl down the bottom of his hairline, I just want to kind of make it a little bit stronger. Again, yeah, trying to keep this hairline quite natural. Nothing too sort of short and tapered like that, just trying to strengthen it up a little bit really. It's quite refreshing than doing such a sort of super sharp taper. A bit of length in there looks good sometimes, you know. Not everything has to be uh, down to a skin on the neck or the sides. You've said that before, Dan, haven't you? That a lot of kind of celebrity cuts as well are normally left really loose and. Yeah, yeah, uh, definitely. Yeah, they're not involved. always super, super sharp in it again. Continuity is always easier that way as well. Um, guy, a, a lot of the, especially the male actors, uh, the ones that I know who's, who I've worked with, generally don't have anything too sort of um, too different because they're usually going on to another film. A lot of these guys film back to back, so they can't have like a skin fade or you know, unless they're doing something like Peaky Blinders, it's different. But if they're doing something like say one film to another or stage or whatever, they've got to have something that they can still kind of work with for the next film, whether that's to clip hair pieces in or or to go short on the neck for a particular look. So if you look at David Beckham, I don't think I've ever seen a haircut where David Beckham's hair has been lined out sharply. I don't know, I don't know whether that's whether that's down to it, to his own particular his own barber or stylist or hairdresser, or whatever you want to call it, him or her. Um, but a lot of the time, it's it. I think it's just easier to kind of keep it a bit more natural. I think sometimes it looks quite nice. I think it's refreshing not to have something that is so defined all the time because everyone's got that. Why not maybe keep it a bit softer around the ears for a change? Create your own, create your own trend in some ways. And I find that's. I've always I've always kind of liked that about David Beckham that he hasn't gone sort of he hasn't always had it like look as though it's freshly cut for an event i think it looks as though he's he's gone as he is on the day which i'm, I'm sure obviously i'm guessing that is totally wrong because he's probably got some stars here for him but on the flip side it, it's a nice look to give somebody isn't it, that he hasn't you know he's made an effort but he hasn't gone over the top and had a, a fresh haircut for example because not everyone in reality can get a fresh haircut when they go into an event what they can get is though is that is he can get tied up around the edges you can see what we're doing with this one we're just giving it nice and low so it looks nice and strong but it looks neat and tidy as well. Again, the good thing with this as well is that it doesn't grow out really harshly either. So if I was to like really, really define the edges and work right round and kind of cut right into the hairline, it's going to ruin the look for one. But also, it's going to grow out really, really quickly as well. So the less you cut into the hairline, the longer your haircut will last because you're not going to leave stubble. You're not putting it in again. Putting it into the hairline is the key. Is is, is the key message? Is you want to try and just follow the hairline and strengthen it. That's what I was always taught, that's what I've always believed in. Um, again, some haircuts you do need to strengthen up a bit more than others if you're going shorter or, again, the client requests it. It's another good option to give your client, you know, that you just, you know, you can say to them, do you really want to have a very sharp hairline? Do you want it to be a bit more natural? I guarantee you most of the clients will say it, unless you have a certain age, maybe in the 30s and older, will say, I'll just keep it natural for me. Especially when you explain the reasons why, it'll last a little bit longer. 
So again, it's just, again, it's just personal opinion, it's personal preference, but nothing wrong with that. I mean, look, if you like to really, really define the edges, wicked, you know, cool, but sometimes I think it's a little bit refreshing to keep it more length in there. So again, this look for me is that it looks cut, but not overly, not overly styled. So just again, a trim is what the, the, the word is we're looking for here. Nice trim. So that's done. Onto the top now. So again, don't want to lose a lot of length. I think Christian's suit a bit more length on the top, especially with it being a little bit thinner. So we're going to pick a length on the top that we like. Again, Christian, this is down to you, my friend. It doesn't matter how short you want to go. I can I can suggest a length to you, and sure. we can wait on that we, one. Yeah, go sound good, yeah. yeah. And I would say to strengthen this up about there. What I mean by that, strengthen up. If if, if we had feeler vision, that sounds a bit, a bit wrong, doesn't it? But if we had that, where you can feel what I'm feeling through my fingers here, it's very thick down the bottom and it almost starts to get like elasticated through so you feel a stretch on it through there. Now that starts to feel super dry. Now a good way to do it yourself is if you, between your finger and thumb, is if on yourself you freshly washed hair, dried hair as well, grab it from the root and pull to the ends and you'll feel the thickness at the bottom and it getting thinner towards the ends as well. You'll feel it on yourself, right? So again, that's what I'm feeling for when I bring my fingers through this one. I'm feeling for it gets dry. And I'm starting to see, so I feel out there, it's, it's quite dry. So I think that'd be a good place to cut shorter, yep. just to give it a bit of strength there, it'll feel a bit thicker as well, look thicker as well. Mm -hmm. Nice and straight. Guy through there. Now I'm into the final section of the front, bringing it straight up. There we go. Now, I haven't took anything off the fringe yet, because I over directed the fringe back. Essentially, that's what you're doing. Any look that we're trying to go for, where you're trying to keep just a nice generic trim, a little bit longer on top, a little bit shorter on the sides, you always want to try and keep that fringe to the very last. Guy from the top, guy from the bottom, cut in. So I'm working just at the recession point, you're just below the bottom, or just below the round of the head is where I'm working to. That's how I find my guy. So I'm still keeping it nice and square. I'm going to stop just above the top of the ear. So I'm creating that separated again through there to create that blend and break that blend up for him as well. Same thing on the other side now, starting from the middle, just off the centre of the head, and just repeat what I've just done. Bring the fringe into the sides. So I'm going to wait the crown through. I'm just going to start from my guide here and just cut it all the way around. So towards you get to, especially with finer hair, I wet it down for the majority of the sections on the top. And as you get to the sides and blending, try and let it dry naturally so you can see exactly how it's going to sit. A little bit hard to pick up, but it's going to be a little bit more true to how it's going to fall when you know Christian wakes up in the morning, for example. And a lot of length will come through here now because. This crown situated on the right, as you can see, there's quite a lot of length. Again, like I've said in past few videos, don't be afraid to cut it off. And then I'm going to bring one section back just from before the crown, and I'll bring it back horizontally just to cross check. Here we go. And that is the top connected into the sides. Now to finish off, I'm going to cut the crown. Uh, sorry, cut the fringe in. Again, okay, I'm not going to take too much off this. I'm going to still keep a bit of length in it. Now, a good way of Wetting the fringe down, I know it might sound so obvious, right? But the amount of times I've been sprayed in the face with the water bottle because they're trying to put my fringe. A good little tip spray it onto your comb and then comb it through. That way it saves the whole like kind of spray into the forehead kind of thing. It's not comfortable. Again, I'm just thinking of ways to make it more comfortable for the client. And you see, it still does the same thing you want to do, it just stops from sort of soaking them as well. The amount of times I've had that where water's just dripping in my eye. Oh, mate, I know, I know. <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yeah, you're, you're almost prepared for it. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> see, see. Good tip. Every day is a school day, you see. <laughs> so I'm going to put this fringe in now. And I'll bring it down and I'm going to find my guide just as I lift my fingers up here. There's my guide there. I'm going to put it nice and blunt. Okay, I want this to be universal. I want this to move around from, so I'm not going to keep it like longer on one side. I'm going to keep it true to his hairline. And as you see, as it gets to this side, it should blend in. I'm going to work again, hopefully going to match into the corner, so I'm following this hairline around with my fingers. And as I get to this bit here, as you can see, blends in nicely. 
I'm going to point cut into this. Now, this is not going to do anything, ruin the hair cut at all. I just don't want this fringe to be too blunt when he, when he dries it. So I'm just, all I'm going to do is just cut into it. It's the only point cut I'm going to do to this whole haircut. It's just the fringe, so he hasn't got a fringe like, you know, too, too like completely blunt. It's not really the look we're going for. It's going to ruin the look almost as well. I want him to be able to like wear this down if he wants to as well. So again, a versatile haircut. And you can keep the length from just breaking it up a little bit. It's not, they don't really do like speeches. So I'm going to dry this through. And then we start it off. So all I'm going to do is literally I'm going to dry it forward. Maybe slightly over to this side, but I'm going to dry it. I'm not going to dry it into the style at all. Because it doesn't need it. His hair will fall any way it wants to. I just want to dry this off. So again, pull from his crown. I'm just drying it from left to right, just to dry it through. As you see how quickly this dries. And then try it. And that is kind of what you came in with, just a lot shorter and a lot neater through. Again, Tom Holland vibe is there for the way you look, but we can again, all we need to do now is style it in the way you want to, which I'm thinking again, the way he wears his hair, yeah. your hair naturally goes to one side, so I'm just going to go with it. Not trying to hide nothing. I'm just trying to add a little bit of body to it, I'm not going to move it. So I'm going to finish with a little bit of your mac blade. This is, this is ideal because it's super, super dry. Uh, it's going to add a little bit of a thicker feel to his hair as well. Again, Christian, what I, what I love about Christian though is that he's so cool that he knows his hair's thin and he's just like, yeah, whatever. And I like that because I think sometimes you've got to embrace the fact that you do have thinner hair and not try and aim to try and have something that's a bit unrealistic. I think go with what you've got. I think it's easier for me as a barber to, to kind of try and give you some advice on what to do with your hair. Um, and again, trying to find a style that works for you again. We've done haircuts where we've done for thinning hair, for example. That's generally older guys who are, who are kind of like maybe that kind of male, um, male pattern ball that's more than anything else. You're, I don't know if you'd ever really lose your hair that much. I think it's just a finer texture. It could always be that. You never know. Um, your hairline's nice and strong. You know, it's not received too high. Then you just got finer hair. Again, finer style that works for you. So again, keeping it a bit longer works really well. Doesn't make you look too young, which you know, a little laugh out before. Um, I am older than Tom Holland. Oh, well. oh, uh, <laughs> a few years I, I know older. You are. We, we know that. We know, we know that now. All right. <laughs> um, but again, try and go with for something that kind of works for your, your, your density of your hair as well. Don't be realistic about it and I think it will make that relationship with you and your barber a little bit easier and, it, and I think it will give them a bit more free reign. So I'm just going to apply a little bit of mac clay to this now again rubbing it all in through the sides now I can't wait for you to see the texture on the sides that did again we've done no point cut we've done nothing it's just purely down to section so I'm working this all the way through and I'm just going to start so it looks a bit natural for you so a little bit over to one side so once I've combed it through, I'm just doing that to get the product sitting there nice. I'm not trying to make it look overly stout, just a little bit over to one side, kind of go with what you've got, very Tom Holland-esque. Now, what I want to show you now, Liam, is that when I just run my fingers through the sides, you see, you see all that kind of nice little bit of movement, that's a little bit of texture through there as well. It's not very, it's not perfectly blunt. It's moving around nicely for them. It's having a little bit of shape in there. Just by working your palm to palm all the way around. It creates that very natural finish to the hair as well. By leaving that length through the top there as well, especially through the crown, it created that nice little bit of shape there, so it's not too flat now. It's a little bit more bulkier through here. Right, so to recap, um, we had a little chat on the couch and we were talking that you don't want something that's going to make him look really young. Again, if your hair's a bit thinner and you've got a bit of a baby face, you can. As short as you go, you can look a lot younger. Um, I'm not going the beard for that reason at all, all right, if anyone asks. It's just that I'm lazy. Um, but yeah, again, I know I'm like, when I clean shave, I, look, I do look about 14 and it's not the best look, you know. Um, so we, we tried to stay away from that and we tried to keep a bit more length in it um, and try and lean it up a little bit as well. But add, add a little bit of movement and kind of natural, a natural finish to the side of the back, not something that's been kind of heavily over, over texturized. And again, not trying to see scalp exposure. So I wait palm to palm, which if you watch the video, you'll, you'll see what I mean by that. And we just went for a style that you kind of came in with, but a bit, a bit smarter and a bit neater, really. Uh, again, the Tom Holland thing was to kind of a, a reference how he looked very similar to him and he had a very similar hairstyle when he came in, so we thought we could go with that. And it was a good little reference point for me to say to you, look, I think this is what will work for you, but something that will work for your hair texture, so I do explain why we're going to use these techniques and whatnot. And for anyone who wants this style of cut or the Tom Holland haircut, what can they? What anyone can they wants this, so especially if you've got, a, you know, if you've got hair like me, 
Um, you're looking to have like sort of finger length on the sides. So again, whatever, whatever, whatever length you want to go to before you see scalp exposure. So probably for me to get the same look as you, Christian, I would could go for like number four on the back of the sides of mine because it would probably look as long as yours is because it's a bit finer, mine's a bit thicker. So again, you're looking for something just before scalp exposure. So say you've got really super thick hair like me, um, or if you don't know that, ask your barber. Um, and if you have, go for something that is, like say, like a number four, or, or even just as a cut back and sides. But yeah, again, just before scalp exposure on the back and sides, and then just kind of, just a nice sort of trim on the top, really, from what you've got. Again, something that you've got a little bit of length you can kind of work through, kind of work, come over to one side of it, like that, if you want. Um, but looking for that kind of slightly brushed over to one side, look, that's what we're going for. And then picking the product that works for your hair. So I, I prefer a bit of a kind of more natural shine to mine. So I went for, the cre my, my, I went for, for a cream today more than a clay. Um, but yeah, again, down to what you know yourself after using so many products, but also what your barber knows, whatever works for your hair colour as well. So not always necessarily about what works for the look, but what works for your hair colour. So try and go for a little bit more natural finish on a, on a dark hair sometimes, can look really, really healthy. Stay away from it on finer hair or lighter hair, because they make it look a bit greasy. Uh, and then obviously, you know, whatever you like the feel of as well. So if you like that kind of more matted feeling where you think that you've got anything in your hair, again, your Regal Gentleman Matt Clay is great for that. Um, but again, if you want that pomade feel, try a bit of Rousel, try a bit of, you know, American yeah. Crew, whatever you like. It just all depends on what, you're, on what look you want to gain from this. But again, it's a very simple, short back and size ish kind of haircut, um, tailored to, to match him for Christian's thickness and density of hair.